two. All right. Hello, and welcome back to another fun-filled episode of the Hammercast. I'm your host, Alex, the Hebrew Hammer Salkin, and joining me today is Khaled Burabi. And as we discussed prior to the, the start of this, um, I'm not really pronouncing it correctly because there's a, there's a better and more Arabic way of pronouncing it, which he will tell us momentarily. Uh, Khaled is the founder of the Harambe system, which caught my eye because Harambe still holds a very near and dear uh, place in my heart. Uh, he was unfortunately gunned down by some trigger happy zookeepers for a good enough reason. I will get, we'll get into the, the whole story behind it. For those of you who don't know about Harambe the gorilla, you soon will know. All right. We will, <laughs> we will cover this. Um, so we're going to be talking about uh, Khaled's origin story. We're going to be talking about his uh, training system. Uh, he has a, a, a particular piece of equipment that is kind of a modern take on a really, really ancient form of strength training, which is would have been maybe called strand pulling, which we would now call like band training, like with rubber bands and that sort of a thing. Um, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a lot of other fun things. And before we do that, uh, gentle listener, I always remind you that if you have not, you should get my nine minute kettlebell and body weight challenge. It would probably be a perfect complement to band training, I would think, because I, I do a fair bit of band training in my, in my own workouts. And I do a fair bit of the work that is found in the nine minute kettlebell and body weight challenge. There are a couple of gait pattern oriented movements, both loaded and unloaded that uh, will help you to uh, boost your strength, your stamina, your resilience, and all sorts of other good things. And as the name implies, it's only going to take you nine minutes. So that means you can keep doing it on whatever other program you're doing, and it will only enhance it, not detract from it. So go to nineminutechallenge.com if you would like to get your own free copy, and uh, you will have a good old time. So now without further ado, Khaled, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Now, I, I, uh, I did a little bit of uh, reconnaissance work before we began here, and I, I understand that you are a professor of mathematics. That's true. That, that is, is true. amazing. I'm, I'm especially impressed because I was never good at math. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah very much so. So uh, I, you have my kudos, like, right out of the gate. Oh. And, <laughs> and I, but it does make me curious. How did you get into – what is your origin story with strength training? Because somebody who goes on to become a – uh, a professor of, of mathematics uh, and also has a, a very popular uh, training system. There, there's got to be a cool story there somewhere. So take us all the way back to Little Khaled and, you know, your life, your origin story, and then how you got into training. Oh, I mean, Little Khaled was, in, I grew up in Kuwait and uh, I remember like the first time I was like really aware of my body composition, I think was, uh, my older brother was telling me that I was fat and I had trouble running around the block. Like we were all running around the block and had trouble. And I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe he's right. And I need to do something about it. I was a fat kid. I mean, I had a belly and so my legs were pretty fat. I remember not being happy about that. And I wanted to change it. And I knew nothing about fitness. I mean, our nutrition, like I knew absolutely nothing. So what I did was I just ate fat free candy all the time. And Thanks. Yeah, but I was in a caloric deficit, so I lost a lot of weight. <laughs> and before I knew it, my older brother was telling me I was too skinny. <laughs> it's like, always, it's, it's a moving target, you know, like if you got an older brother, they're always going to find something to make fun of you for. <laughs> yeah, and it was, yeah, so I didn't know anything. And then, uh, you know, in high school, I joined when I was in Kuwait, in middle school and high school. I, I played a lot of sports. I liked staying active. I still knew nothing about, somehow no one ever educated me about nutrition or exercise or weightlifting. I just um, like I, I was really into basketball in high school and I just played basketball all the time. I thought that was the best way to get better at it, but I never really ate well. I didn't eat enough protein. Um, and when I came to America, uh, I wasn't good enough to make uh, any of the sports teams when I came to America. So I came around 11th grade mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I always liked math and art. Actually, I was more into art growing up, but then math was sort of and there's a lot of art in math. A lot of people think math is uh, just an engineering thing, but it's not. There's a lot of art in it. Uh, and that's what drew me to math. Uh, and so like, I focused a lot on math, but then I went to uh, undergrad, I majored in math and art. And uh, then I went to grad school, pursued my PhD. And about halfway through grad school, I mean, I was still like, I stayed active all the time. I didn't really know what I was doing, but you know, I'd go swimming or something. I would try to do something every week. 
I mean, getting a PhD in math, you don't really have that much time to do anything other than mm-hmm. math all the time. Uh, but then, you, uh, like my my mom got cancer, and like when I found out she had breast cancer, uh, my mom is like she was by herself. I just sort of um, I was lucky. I was able to kind of take a leave from my PhD and uh, go help her. And so I spent a, a year, about two years living with my mom, taking care of her when she went through treatment. And she, uh, something they recommended was, I mean, definitely she had to be on top of her nutrition and she had to be on top of exercise. Like the doctor was like, you have to really be on top of your exercise. So I did a motivator. I went to every class she went to. I went to every Pilates class, every yoga class. And I learned a lot about fitness doing that. I mean, just talking to the coaches and stuff. Um, that's when it really, cause I wanted to learn this stuff so I could help my mom. And so I learned a lot of uh, fitness stuff. In fact, I, I got, I learned so much about Pilates when I went back to grad school and then eventually went to postdoc. Uh, I ended up running some classes for other postdocs to do Pilates classes just cause I really enjoyed doing it. So I just shared. So I never got, um, I never got uh, certified or anything but I just did so many classes that I was able to just redo those classes for people. And that was a lot of fun. So I had like somehow that really, that's when I really started learning about fitness and like how to get fit. Um, and then I got into, into rock climbing as a, as a sport. I really enjoyed rock climbing. Um, and I did some CrossFit on the side with rock climbing. Um, also, in the, by the, I, I used kettlebells. I, I really love Turkish get-ups. I mean, that's nice. one of my favorite moves. I mean, I, I just, I feel like there's nothing like a Turkish get-up. It's such a great full body movement. It's so yeah. Yeah, it's a real eye opener the first time you do them too. You're like, dang, you know, like there's a lot of coordination going on. That I, I got a, I got some gaps to fill, and uh, get ups do a lot to help that. Yeah, I think it's a great movement. So yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. And I got really into it. I mean, Harambe system came about because, I mean, I, I I'd go to a gym and work out at a gym normally, but then COVID hit, and New York. I live in New York City. Mm-hmm. The apartment's really small. I had to find a in home solution. And I didn't like anything. And I wanted to continue doing barbell movements. I, I just, I really like barbell movements. I like doing big compound movements. Um, so I couldn't find anything on the market that could do that in a this small amount of space mm-hmm. where you're not dropping weights and like really annoying your neighbors. So I had to figure that out because I mean, neighbors hear everything here. They hear everything. Yeah. So I, yeah, so I made this, this band bar system and my friends all wanted one. And so I made the company and started selling and then, yeah. And then word of mouth, mostly started selling a lot. I remember at the first 500 bars, I, I, I pieced together myself and I remember I'd, I'd put them in the stroller and, and roll out 10 to the UPS store just to ship them out. Yeah. But now it's different. <laughs> no, good. You probably got a fulfillment center that, you know, and probably somebody who puts it all together and everything like that. I'm not making them myself, myself anymore. <laughs> no, no, but you at least started off correctly because at first you want to make sure that you can keep the cost down and everything like that. Now, I'm curious about the name. Now, obviously, I think we, we know the origins of the name, but the listeners might not remember who Harambe was. I mean, it's been, you know, what, six years since that, that uh, fateful day. So give me, let's talk a little bit about Harambe the gorilla that story and then why it was that you choke i'm assuming a harambe the gorilla was the reason that you chose the name of the of the company so so harambe was this uh, he he's a gorilla that was in a zoo i think in cincinnati mm-hmm. ohio and uh a kid dropped into the into his i think that the way that they had it set up like someone could fall into his um, if the parents baby. were negligent enough yes the kid could certainly fall in so which... some kid fell inside and then he like dragged the kid around and i think they determined that he was being aggressive towards the kid and then they, they put him down. Um, and I, so it, it's one of the top, I guess, 10 memes of this decade or something. Very, of all time, uh, popular. Very I mean, one thing about it though, I mean, so when I was trying to figure out a name, I was talking to my friends and one of them said jokingly said Harambe and I was like, you know, tossing a lot of ideas for the name and Harambe really stuck with me because I, I looked it up and it meant to pull together, care for one another. Like that's the meaning of the name uh, and I, that really, I mean, I wanted a company that did that, that was all about honesty and helping each other and bringing people together. We have this Facebook group, uh, now it's 2000 people. It's very active. And a, a big part of it is just a bunch of people trying to help each other work out and stay fit. And, and that's, that's what I really want this, this company to be about. So that's why I picked the name. 
I also think it's, you know, it, it's not a bad thing to remember the gorilla and like what can happen. And, yeah. and like, you know, I mean, it's sort of, I also think it like to maybe can pull people away because I think people get really focused on, the, on, on like maybe even too obsessed about their body in some way. So somehow like stepping back and thinking about the bigger picture, it's probably a good thing. So I don't know. Yeah, I think people have a tendency uh, when they're training to think only about, um, you know, let's say the muscles that they're trying to build or the fitness goal that they're trying to achieve. But like, how is that going to make them a better member of their community? How is that going to make them uh, a better uh, a better family member? You know, like you talked about, for instance, um, going with your mom to these Pilates classes, right? So the fitness for you had the higher purpose. It was like, it was a way for you to not only connect with your mom, but to help her through this very difficult journey. And I think that a lot of people, you know, most people, uh, are training recreationally. They're, they don't have like a sport or other activity that they're really trying to get better at for which the training is, is supplementary. Um, and, but everybody needs it nonetheless. And so I think it is, especially now we've had these last couple of years of so much uh, isolation and distance from one another. I think it's more important than ever to get uh, ideally, you know, face-to-face -face and, and um, personal connections with people, you know, obviously having a Facebook group is excellent. You know, having that kind of rapport with people from all over the place is, uh, is really second to none, but, uh, but yeah, a hundred percent, like pulling together, being there for one another. I think that's really the essence of, of being strong and being fit and being able to, you know, offer yourself up to help when, when the time comes and nobody really wants to find themselves in a situation where, you know, the time has come for them to step up and, you know, they're huffing and puffing and they, they can't really do it. And somebody else has to do it for them. hundred percent. Yeah. Now, um, you chose the band in particular because it was, a uh, well, yours is kind of a combination of a band and a bar. Uh, mm -hmm. is that correct? Or, or, or something there about, or something uh, oh, similar correct. to that? And also a foot plate. So you have a, a foot plate. Yeah. So the band can go around the foot plate also attaches to the bar and then it attaches the bar in a way that you can actually rotate the band or nice. rotate the bar. So it has these smooth, um, attachment systems, which was really unique to Harambe system or the only, we're the first, I mean, it, it's, it's my invention, it's patent pending. So it has these slings that attach to the bar mm -hmm. and that, um, that, that, that makes it so that, um, it feels really smooth when you're doing like curls or anything or doing very heavy things, the force. Cause if you have like something like a hook, uh, it puts torque on the bar. Yeah. It tends to mess with the bushings a little bit. That's not, so. it's not ideal when you're going heavy. And so, yeah, and you know the the path of a bar too. I mean, if anybody's ever really used a barbell um, to any great degree, like it, it's it's pretty unique. Um, and so you do need something that if you want to try to replicate it or even improve upon it with the bar and band system, you definitely have to have something that is not going to be like now your hands are kind of twisted in this weird way because you're holding yeah. onto this bar, and that the the normal path for the movement would necessitate that the bar moves. And so if you have that, that certainly makes a, a big difference. Um, now, when it comes to the band in particular, now you chose a band versus just, let's say like isometrics, which is another way for people to get strong and which I think is very yeah. smart, by the way, to have chosen the band because isometrics are excellent, but it's, it's a little hard, I think, for people to determine what kind of uh, improvements they're actually making. So how, how with the Harambe system, can people kind of track their progress, uh, see where they're going in their training and, and notice some differences? Oh, so the bands themselves, uh, it, the, the system comes with uh, six bands mm -hmm. of different colors. And, you know, as you go up, the thicker bands have more weight uh, and you can you can stack them. So you get a lot of different tensions you can get by stacking the bands. Mm -hmm. And so just by getting heavier, you you know, you're lifting more. There, there's that. that. That's the main thing is just yeah. if you're if you're you have more bands stacked, um, we have a chart, too, that lists um, how how they compare stacked and stuff in terms of of forces. Very cool. Now, um, I am curious, uh, your background with like mathematics, do you think that that has helped you in coming up with the bar and putting together the system and other things like that? Or is that just like, in your opinion, is that just completely secondary? Uh, I think that's a great question. I think it helped a lot. Um, mostly because I've had so much, I've spent so much time solving problems. And this was a problem, like figuring out a way to get rid of the weird torque. Because I mean, hook bars did exist. Mm -hmm. Figuring out some way of, of making something that's easy to use. Um, and also the, another benefit of the slings is that you can change the length of the rope very easily. Yeah. So that's something you just like thread them out and then you can have a longer rope. Uh, 
Yeah, I think the problem solving helped just because I was so persistent. I mean, it took a while to figure it out and I just didn't give up. So I think that that helped. Um, practically speaking, uh, I know calculus very well. Like for someone that's a mathematician, calculus is like their ABCs, but right. I know it really well. And at some point I did have to do, I did have to predict whether things would break. And I had to, you know, and I, want, I, need, I wanted to use, I wanted to make sure I, I made a system that would never break. Uh, and I used something called finite element analysis, which is like uh, you solve these equations using a computer to predict the forces and on, on different parts of things. Mm -hmm. That really helped me a lot. I was able to just do that myself. Uh, if I didn't do that myself, it would have cost a fortune. Um, so that saved me a lot of money. It also, I didn't have to just trust someone else telling me something wasn't gonna break. I really understood why things wouldn't break. It really helped me in the design process. Um, I think, you know, if I wasn't a mathematician, that would have been much harder. To, you know, to I'll do. tell you what, I, I really think that uh, your next calling needs to be writing word problems for math books that actually like resemble real life, because this is a perfect example of how you use advanced mathematics to actually create something incredible. And it's not like yeah. nobody realizes the importance of math, but think like, I, like I said, I was never good at math. And so having to try to figure out like, well, oh, Susan has 14 bananas in one thing, you know, like the, the normal word problems are, are just completely uh, theoretical, but this actually makes perfect sense. And I, I think especially um, for bridging the gap between people who maybe aren't gonna necessarily go into uh, like an engineering field or, or let's say a STEM field um, and being able to see how they can use math to actually not only save a boatload of money, you know, because like you said, it would have cost you a fortune to have somebody else figure this out. Yeah. Um, but to create something with uh, a, a smooth and streamlined design that works really effectively and really efficiently and improves upon existing products. Because like you pointed out, there are other, you know, similar uh, products out there, but they, they fall short because they don't have this rotating uh, system which again, I remind the listeners, patent pending. Um, so don't think that you're gonna just go and, you know, and, and take the idea. Um, so now the next question too, is that when people are, are using the system, how do they use it for, uh, let's say they're already going to the gym, but they're like, I, you know what, I wanna, I wanna supplement my training. Um, how, like, what are some of the ways that you recommend doing that? Like, what are some interesting and, and uh, novel yeah. things that one can do with a bar and band system that would enhance kettlebell training or body weight training or barbell training? There's a lot, there's a lot of uh, customers that actually do uh, kettlebells and bands. They're the ones that recommended that I talk to you actually. Yes, today. yes, exactly. Yeah. Tracy, if you're listening, we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're great. Uh, I mean, I think it is a great combination. And also it's a good system by itself. I could, it can, you can use it as a full resistance training solution. Um, that, that's a great question. You, if you're already doing weights and you have a barbell, and you have a full at-home gym system. I know people like that that do have Harambe system. Um, that's that's not, I mean, that's not the main scenario uh, because I mean, if you have all the weights and stuff, I think weights are great. They work really well, you know. And if you have something that's working for you, why change it? But uh, you could add it in. Uh, one thing that's really nice about bands is that uh, you don't need a spotter at all. So you could do finishing sets. It also is a different stimulus on the muscle. Uh, it it. You know, it will, it will, you, you'll feel more force uh, at different ranges. So it's a different, you, you'll get some confusion. I mean, not that muscle confusion should happen that often, but if you're at a plateau with your weightlifting, bands can, I mean, also just by increasing, because bands do work to stabilize your muscles more yeah. than weights would, uh, that can help people break through plateaus. And so I know some strong men who really care about, you know, lifting very heavy weights that use Harambe system. I've actually made custom bars for them. And, and they use it to increase their max lifts. And it's, it's because it just, it's a different stimulus. So the, they just get stronger. Um, That's very cool. And you know, as I was mentioning earlier, um, there is a long history of using bands for training. In fact, a uh, recent guest on the show, Jamie Lewis has a website called Plague of Strength. Um, trigger warning. There's a lot of uh, random nudity and gore that oh, yeah. he's, yeah, he's a, a wow. very eclectic individual, hands down the best strength historian of the modern age and also uh, extremely strong himself. But he wrote uh, at least one article. I've, I've pulled it up um, for anybody who would be interested. Uh, you can find it on his website. And um, it's 
basically it's called There's Nothing New Under the Sun. And one of the things he talks about is how age old strand pulling is. And he, he refers to it as strand pulling because back in the day, it was, uh, you might have like strength contests that involved uh, like a bow and arrow and their bow and arrows were not like compound bows today where it gets easier when you pull it. I got like, you, you might have to apply 100, 150 pounds of force just to pull something back. So think about doing a row with 150 oh. pounds and then having to, having to do that over and over again in, in the field of battle. Um, and yeah, the result, wow. and, and this is the important thing, because a lot of things, I think a lot of times people think you need to have some sort of like iron resistance, which obviously is, is very valuable, as you pointed out. But here's the thing that I think is great about uh, band training, and this is what we've been talking about up to this point, is that they can analyze skeletons of a lot of these archers, and they, can, they, they notice the bones are thicker on the sides that they were dominant, and they're pulling back you know, the, their uh, bows and everything like that. So people, I think, don't think of band training as being anything other than maybe some like rehab or, you know, something they do when they don't have other tools around. But like you're pointing out, that's just not the case. Uh, it, it makes an excellent complement to uh, this other training, like you pointed out, because you've had, you've had uh, professional strongmen reach out to you. But it's also excellent, uh, even as a standalone system. So if somebody wants to do like a standalone a workout with uh, the Harambe system, like what might they consider or what might they do? So like, you don't have to necessarily design an entire sample program, but we'll, let's uh, break it down into maybe like uh, how they might structure a workout solely with bands. We have a, a standard workout routine. It's a push pull legs. Essentially, if something works with weights, it's going to work with our system. I, I yeah. made the system to closely mimic weights as much as possible. Even the force curve is like more like that with weights. The, we have a heavier bar. And what the heavier bar does is it actually gives stability to more stability to the movements. Cause you think of it, something has mass. It's like, it, it has more stable. It's harder to rotate because mm -hmm. it has some mass to it. So that actually adds, it makes it feel more like weights. It makes everything feel more like weights. So essentially any work, your favorite workout routine, I like push pull legs. So the standard workout routine is push pull legs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a three set per movement routine. You, you, you do the, the, you, you do a push, rest, pull, rest, legs, rest, rest. So there's a lot of rest in there. On my rest days, I do cardio or high intensity training for, for fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of room to do other things. Uh, it is really, it's a tough program though, but <laughs> no, it sounds like it. I mean, if anybody's ever done a push pull legs program, they can, they can certainly attest to the fact that it's difficult. Uh, now, one of the things that I like about band training, and I'm sure that this is exemplified in the Harambe system, is the fact that you've got um, it. Things get a lot harder after a certain range of motion. Like, you know, and this is not that uncommon. Let's say with certain kettlebell movements or calisthenics movements, you'll have like one uh, uh, one part of the movement will be relatively easy, um, and then you'll reach like a sticking point. But what's interesting with bands that I've noticed is that that sticking point may come a lot later because it, things get exponentially harder. So um, what, kind of, uh, uh, what kind of changes do people notice in their strength and their ability to generate force when they start to get toward that end range? And rather than just being able to you know, ride on the momentum or the fact that their leverage is now a little bit better, uh, what do they start to see happening with their, uh, we can say kettlebell, body weight, barbell strength? Oh, that's a good question. I think uh, from what I've seen and from the studies I've read, uh, I think it's very similar to weights. I don't think that, that you're going to see greater strength doing band training necessarily. I mean, it is a slightly different stimulus. So if you're stuck, you could use band training to like push through to, it'll change the movement slightly enough so you can push through plateaus for some people. Uh, but I think it's very comparable to weights. I mean, you're gonna see the same kind of, of uh, benefits from weights, mm -hmm. the same. Um, strength gains as they do. And there's, there have been mass studies done like this where they've looked across all of them. And the only group of people where it's different between weights and bands is uh, people with osteoarthritis and fibromyalgia re report better results with bands. Interesting. And yeah, I mean, I have a theory for why that's true. Um, so far, you know, it's, it's a correlation. Let's hear it. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's because, you know, bands, um, you don't have this thing with bands where you get shock loads. You know, if yeah. you drop a weight, like the force that you feel after you drop weight is much more than the actual weight of the thing. Yeah. Like if, you, if you drop 200 pounds from like really, really high, it'll hit with like 700 pounds of force. Yeah. Or if you like jerk with a weight, you feel a lot more force when you jerk. But that doesn't happen with bands. So you don't, you don't have like this, I'm guessing that that's what does it. 
and it's, it's really striking. I mean, you get a much more strength gain. Someone, and, and I have some customers that just haven't been able to lift weights for, for many decades um, because of injuries, mm -hmm. and, but they're able to lift with bands and they're able to make progress. I'm one of those people. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting you point this out, too, because actually, again, going back to uh, something that Jamie Lewis has pointed out and, and others, too. There's a guy named uh, Alexander Juan Antonio Cortez, uh, who has is, who is said some, uh, something similar, uh, for instance, in using band training. Both of them have pointed out that, uh, well, Jamie in particular, I remember in an article that he wrote, he said that, um, you know, even after like a workout at the gym, you know, later in the evening at home, he, he might do some band training with, you know, let's say overhead press or some curls or tricep extensions. And what's nice about it is that it doesn't seem to have the same impact on the nervous system that a lot of this like, heavy iron training does. Um, and so for people who are not familiar, like really heavy barbell work will take a lot out of you. So that's why you see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, barbell training programs that don't exceed two to three days a week. I was just reviewing one of Hugh Cassidy's programs today in, uh, in a book by Marty Gallagher called The Purposeful Primitive. So if anybody has heard of it, it's an excellent book. And he basically trained two days a week. I mean, it was, it was there were two very hard days per week, but that was it. You know, I think if you do that with, let's say, kettlebells or calisthenics, um, it, it's not, in most people's cases, I don't think it's going to be enough. With a barbell program, you could absolutely yeah. do that and have it, and even border on being too much because of the amount of weight yeah. that you can use, the amount of stress that it puts on the nervous system. But the great thing about band training, like you're pointing out, is that not only is it easier on the joints, so you've got, let's say, a, his, a history of injuries, um, then this might be a good approach to your training. But mm -hmm. what's also very cool is that your nervous system seems to be able to handle it better so that if you like training frequently, you like, you know, you're, you're a creature of habit as we, as so many of us are, it seems like that makes it a much easier thing to, to achieve. Okay. Have you noticed that before? Uh, no, <laughs> really, <laughs> I didn't notice that, but I have heard people say that, but I don't yes. notice that I, uh, and you know, I, I have run some tests where I did some weightlifting to compare mm -hmm. and uh, also to test my strength to see how things would grow. I have some videos where, you know, I, I, I lift weights and then I do band training for like 16 weeks. I go back and lift weights and see how I've improved. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, the improvement is as if I was lifting weights, there's, there's nice. no dramatic difference. Um, which is great. I mean, I've never, I mean, as a climber, I never trained my legs. So my legs are, I think the, the, my fastest growing muscles are in my legs in the last two years. Certainly. And yeah, so I mean, my, my back squat and my deadlifts have increased a lot. I'm very, very happy with those numbers now. That's awesome. And I, I don't train in the gym, which is kind of cool. I go in there, but it does feel different. Like when I lift the weights, it feels different. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, no matter what specificity still rules. So it's like, you know, you want to build up a, a certain level of skill with some movements that you want to get better at, but yeah, I know. Again, I think most of the listeners to the show are not doing barbell training, but for those who do have any interest in it, like it's not uncommon for people to end up with low back issues and, and stuff oh, yeah. like that from heavy squats and deadlifts. And it's not because these are bad movements. It's just because um, if you try to train them in the same way that you might train, like with kettlebells, which are much more forgiving, calisthenics, likewise, um, mm -hmm. you're just going to end up running into problems. So the nice thing is, is that you can get comparable uh, results with your training with the Harambe oh, system that uh, you would if you were just in the gym all the time, but with the, with the potential, can't make any guarantees, but the potential uh, of not jacking yourself up in the process. Yeah. You, you're not going to get, yeah, you're not going to drop weights on yourself or feel that shock loading that on the unexpected shock loading on your spine. Yeah. That's a great, I wonder that, you know, your friend who said that uh, it wasn't as hard on the central nervous system, were they using a bar? I don't think so. Similar. The, uh, if I recall correctly, yeah. Well, you know, the other thing too, that makes a difference, honestly, is the, the kind of movement you're doing. I think if you're doing a big movement, like, you know, deadlift or a squat, I think, um, deadlifts in particular are notorious for being, uh, very draining on the nervous system. Yeah. And I think, I think I part of it is that you've sweet. got, you know, like everything is tightening all at once. So you're really squeezing hard with the grip and all these other things. Um, but I think that for instance, if you were to do like, let's say you wanted to build up your arms, it might be a better option to, to do uh, something with like, let's say the Harambe bar or some other type of band training uh, than to do barbell work every single day or kettle, not kettlebell work, barbell or dumbbell work just due to the, the toll it might take on the joints. It seems like in oh, yeah, general- it's hard on the joints, yeah. Yeah, that's the big thing. Yeah. Although I don't think I could do band training every day. I think I would 
plateau so fast. <laughs> yeah, I think it really depends too on another thing. Like with the bar, with the bar. I don't no, know. No, for sure, for sure. I mean, like I've done band training. I was um, recently was training uh, for a, a recertification for my level two uh, kettlebell skills. And so I had to bring my press up. And one of the things that I was doing, in addition to lots and lots of presses, um, was I was doing some band work for my uh, uh, medial delts and rear delts in order to keep them uh, comparably strong, knowing that, you know, with all the uh, military pressing that I was doing, the, you know, the front or the anterior deltoid was getting more than enough work. So I wanted to make sure to, in order to keep my shoulders happy, that I did something that was not going to sucker punch my nervous system and was not going to, you know, tire, completely tire out my shoulders. So I turned to band training for that. And uh, it was definitely, it was a, a useful thing to have done. That's for sure. Um, now, before we head out, I want to ask, where can people find you online and follow you and check out some of the, the training uh, uh, knowledge and materials that you have put together? Uh, HarambeSystem.com is a good starting point. We also have uh, an Instagram account that's very active, Harambe System, no space. Uh, I have a personal account too. Um, if you follow the Instagram one, you can find me, but it's Khalid Burabi, no spaces or anything. Mm -hmm. It's my personal Instagram account. Now, there's also a Facebook group called Harambe System that's very active. You can see people post their workouts every, almost every day. So you can sort of see people's progression. It's sort of so cool. That is very cool. That's very cool indeed. Well, Khalid, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. That's just been yeah. really it, is, it has been a pleasure. Um, I always like talking about interesting and innovative ways of training. And I would say that you have definitely innovated uh, bar and band training in a way that uh, nobody else has. So I'm very curious to see some of the transformations people have had. And uh, I encourage people to go and check out Harambe System in, uh, on Facebook, on Instagram. It's Harambe System with no space. That's right. Um, and you've got a website. I think it's just harambesystem.com. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Awesome. So plenty of choices for all you fine folks out there. So once again, Kala, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Alex. It's been a pleasure. And as always, folks, have fun. And happy training.